What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Hamza Chimaev eyeing three fights. Streaking contender Hamza Chimaev has the unique distinction of being able to bounce between welterweight and middleweight. The former Swedish national wrestling champion currently finds himself stuck in limbo after failing to make weight for his UFC 279 showdown with Nate Diaz. After the fight, it sounded as though Chimaev was likely bound for 185 pounds. However, Tog then changed to a potential showdown with Colby Covington. The fight, which would likely have number one contender stipulations, could help take Chimaev from streaking contender to the clear-cut number one contender. With that said, following Alex Pereira's win over Israel Adesanya in the main event of UFC 281, Chimaev called for a fight with the newly crowned champ. In the series of tweets, he called out Pereira while calling the champ easy money. Daniel Cormier then backed up Chimaev, explaining that the given stylistic matchup of a fight between Chimaev and Pereira should make him the heavy favorite. With so much speculation as to who Chimaev could fight next and no shortage of potential opponents for him, he listed his top three choices during a recent interview with ESPN. First, Chimaev wants a fight with Pereira, and he wants it in Brazil. Then he named Colby Covington as his next desired opponent. In a perfect world, Chimaev would fight Covington in March, he said. As to the third opponent, either light heavyweight champion Yuri Prohaska or former champion Glover Teixeira, who are set to collide next month. If either man falls out of the main event, Chimaev is ready to step in. The way Darren Till sees things, the champ isn't ready for a potential showdown with Chimaev. Given the fact that Pereira was dominated by Adesanya on the ground, Till believes he'd struggle with Chimaev. What do you think? Give us your thoughts in the comments below. Alex Pereira rips Israel Adesanya for calling early stoppage. In the main event of UFC 281, Alex Pereira captured UFC gold by completing his 3-0 trilogy sweep over Adesanya. In the fifth round, Pereira landed a clean series of shots that put the champion down. When the last stylebender got back to his feet, Pereira was there with a barrage of punches. By most accounts, Adesanya was starting to fade. With his back against the cage, he began to duck his head down, in his words, to gas Pereira out before shooting for a takedown. From referee Mark Goddard to UFC President Dana White and many others, Adesanya was badly hurt and on the verge of going out. In the days following the fight, Adesanya appeared on the MMA Hour, where he explained that although he understood where referee Mark Goddard was coming from, he thought the fight should have been allowed to continue. Those comments didn't sit too well with Pereira, who took to Instagram to fire shots at the former champ. Adesanya stopped making excuses, saying that the referee stopped the fight early. You have to thank him for saving your life. The way you were with your head down looking at the ground, I only needed one or two more hits to connect a good knee to your face so we wouldn't know the outcome. As I said at that point in the video, you were a great opponent and I respect you for that. Assume the mistakes along with your team without taking away my merits. You will have one more chance. You're next. From the sound of things, the pleasantries we saw post-fight have essentially gone out the window. With Pereira adamant that a rematch between he and Adesanya is up next, it'll be interesting to see when the UFC books the rematch. Paulo Costa refutes claims of Whitaker fight. When the UFC returns to Perth for UFC 284 next year, former middleweight champion Robert Whitaker was expected to fight Paulo Costa on the card. As a hometown favorite and former champion, Whitaker was expected to be one of the main draws on the card. Despite that, Paulo Costa claims he doesn't even have a deal in place to fight. UFC 284, which is expected to have a showdown of champions in the main event, as Alexander Volkanovsky looks to capture UFC lightweight gold by defeating Islam Makachev, that fight, which is officially announced, was part of a teaser photo that has been making the rounds on Twitter. When Costa got a hold of the photo, he tweeted it along with a message refuting the legitimacy of the fight. Hey guys, I'm here again to say the obvious. I don't have a deal to fight in Perth. A lot of fans are sending their regards for this fight, but it's not for real. Anyway, see you soon in MMA or boxing. The card is set to take place on February 12th, and although the event is still a way off, the UFC has been busy booking fights for the pay-per-view card. In the co-main event, Yair Rodriguez and Josh Emmett are set to square off in a highly anticipated interim featherweight title fight. The way things stand right now, this is the last fight on Costa's contract. Given the fact that Costa recently had troubles two fights ago making a way for his fight against Marvin Vittori, the fact that Costa seems to be playing games in regards to his fight with Whitaker likely doesn't bode well for the eventual contract track negotiations. Before we continue, make sure you give that like button some love and be sure to subscribe to the MMA Zone for all of the latest news. Aljamain Sterling confident he'd beat Cejudo in a wrestling match. 
after bantamweight champion Aljamain Sterling dispatched of TJ Dillashaw in Abu Dhabi at UFC 280, talk immediately shifted to who his next opponent would be. By the look of things, Sterling didn't take much damage in his bout with Dillashaw as a result of the former champion's shoulder injury heading into that fight. With a dominant title defense under his belt, many thought Sterling would look to fight sooner rather than later. Sterling, of course, then switched gears and revealed that he planned to sit out for a while and take some time off before defending his belt again. The way he saw things, fans should be glad to see fighters defend their belts once a year. Waiting in the wings, however, was newly minted number one contender Sean O'Malley, who picked up a controversial win over Peter Yan on the same card. At the same time, former two-division champion Henry Cejudo was eager to return to the octagon after his mandatory six-month USADA testing period. With no shortage of contenders, fans are eager to see Sterling defend the belt sooner rather than later. In the meantime, Cejudo is doing everything he can to secure a fight with the champ. In a recent tweet, he called Sterling out, something that didn't sit too well with the champ. The way he sees things, Cejudo keeps talking about his wrestling background like he'd be able to dominate the Funkmaster. The way the champ sees things, that isn't the case. He spoke on a recent episode of Food Truck Diaries where he fired back at the former two division champ, saying, He keeps talking about this wrestling background. I'm like, well, that doesn't have any real bearing on the fight when you have another high level wrestler. Uh -huh. I mean, if we had a wrestling match, I'm like, so you know, how badly do you think you would win? Or how badly would you actually lose? According to Sterling, his confidence comes from his folk style wrestling background that helps him maintain dominant top position. Cejudo, on the other hand, was an Olympic freestyle wrestler. Naturally, it seems like the only move is for the two men to fight and settle things inside the octagon. And now for our breaking news story of the day. My coach last night at the dinner table got pulled and they said the UFC was suspended him, so he couldn't be here in my corner. Meatball Molly McCann breaks silence following UFC 281 loss. On the prelim card of UFC 281, Meatball Molly McCann suffered a devastating defeat at the hands of Aaron Blanchfield. The fight was a rather lopsided one after Blanchfield took the fight to the ground early. McCann seemed unable to recover, spending a considerable amount of time stuck on bottom crucifix position as shots rained down on her. Ultimately, Blanchfield was able to find the submission and pick up the first round win, stopping the three fight win streak of Meatball Molly. Going into the fight, McCann had a ton of hype behind her and was eager to secure a fight with Valentina Shevchenko. Needless to say, after the loss to Blanchfield, McCann was devastated. She spoke to BT Sports backstage following the loss to discuss the situation in recently released footage, saying, To say I'm anything other than heartbroken would be a lie, but me and you have been in this position before and I know how to handle myself. And just, it's just rubbish that at this level, it's like one little thing just changes it. It's also the most amazing thing about MMA, but I won't, um, I won't be too downbeat, do you know what I mean? Um, I'll get back up and I'll get on. I feel like with each win, I've learned to become more professional and with each loss, I'll take on the chin and do the same. So far, no word yet as to what's next for McCann. On the flip side of things, Blanchfield cemented her place as one of the division's most dominant young prospects. Whether or not her grappling can give Valentina Shevchenko problems, of course, remains to be seen. Going into the fight, McCann certainly had a ton of pressure on her. She spoke during the fight week press conference and revealed that she and Conor McGregor shared a pint to discuss life. Over the course of the sit-down, McGregor offered McCann some advice on how to handle fame and all that comes with it. Although she came up short during the fight with Blanchfield, McCann's stock will likely bounce back as soon as she returns to the win column. Today's video was packed with some juicy stories from the fight world. What are your thoughts about what's going on in MMA? Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the MMA Zone to see more videos just like this. See you next time.